Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. We welcome you back to the Toronto Rock Athletic Center for more MSL Classic action here on the JVI Sports Network. And already game underway, Brooklyn in black. Have the opening possession as they work. Away, away from, from Nick Demood, who gets to start tonight. tonight. Pass, Pass up top for Connor Kiernan. Kiernan looking to feed inside to Jake Fox, and that hit him in the chest as the shot clock was down under 10. First possession now for Jake Fox. Over for Kyle Dawson. Parker Campbell. In addition to the roster from last night, Mike Vegan will play back to back, back, to back here. Here's a shovel shot. It goes wide of Demut. Parker Campbell. Just having a quick look. Rob Clover did not play last night. Neither did Miller Rusbridge, Parker Campbell. I believe those are the only additions besides. Ryan Hartley getting the start. It was, it was Nolan Campbell, Campbell that went to this last night. Hit there. there. Close, Close to the restraining line, line and down, down went Dan Mickle, who now goes, goes off to the bench. bench. As this ball will be picked up by Rob Clover and brought up over center. Passes to Brett. To Jordan Caskinet now in Johnson St. John. Caskinet works off the, the wall. wall. St. John's, John's taking take it down, down through, through the, the middle, middle as walking in the shot there, the save made by Demir. <laughs> Another takedown in front. As this time it's Austin Murphy who ends, ends up, up on the turf. turf. Halfway through the shot, shot clock here. here. Jay Jake Fox, Fox looking for help. help. Now, now cutting to the net. The pass, pass did come. come. Looks like Fox, Fox had almost given up on the play. play. Connor Kearden had not. And probably, probably could have found Fox, Fox in front of Hartley. There's Roman over the center. Roman for Campbell. On the run and putting a brakes on. It's played back up for Vegan. As a turnover and up over center. Jackson Suba. The, the outside, outside Tom, Tom Thompson feeds Kiernan through the, the middle. He's taken, taken down, down so couldn't get a clean shot, shot away there for Austin Murphy. Murphy. Shot here, here for Hartley that did beat the shot clock. And so, so a fresh, fresh 30, 30 seconds coming here. here. Back for Murphy again, and this time Murphy shot. Hits off the body, Kiernan. To the restraining line, shot there, and Hartley the save. Rebound picked up, and they'll go back the other way. We'll play four 15-minute quarters. If you haven't been following along with our SSL Classic coverage, you can do so in the playlist here on the main channel. Also, if you're looking for the uh, old game, Coburg and Six Nations, that is over on channel two. Brett Cologne, one of the two officials, down, down there in the uncommon fit jerseys. jerseys. 
Majerus bringing it up. up. I believe we're back, folks. I apologize. Understand there were some audio issues there to start the game and the broadcast. It is 1-0 here just past the halfway mark. Seven minutes and 10 seconds left in the first period. And I believe those issues have been rectified. through there and called out a goal. And Nick Tamud wants an explanation. But it looks like we're going to be 2 nothing here. As Robert Hudson Behind me, behind me. 
gets the second marker of the game. Good battle at the dot, Tyler Halls. Who was in and fierce at the dot last night as well. And him and Bo Columbus as working in a quick shot and a goal there, I believe. Is that Andy Borgatti off the face-off? Quickly, 3-0 now. As we're down to six and a half left here in our first period. Brooklyn coming in with just one loss on the season. They'll get the back-to-back -to, -back to put a cap on the MSL Classic here tomorrow night against Oakville. Again, at 8 p.m., tickets still available at MajorSeriesLacrosse.ca. Here's Jake Fox. As the faceoff was won that time by Columbus. Bo Columbus was nearly unstoppable at the faceoff dot in the junior tournament. As now pressure on the ball, Mike Feegan will turn back, takes the shot, Hartley over top, excuse me, Nick DeMood. And a couple chops in front of the net. I thought we were about to get a penalty as Mike Byrne was tied up with his man. The play continues the other way, Austin Murphy. Down into the corner, big shot there on Jeff Wittig. As in on net and Hartley will cover up somewhat awkwardly though. And now up the near side, Tyler Biles. Biles for Dawson to the outside. Jordan Kaskinet. We'll leave it up top for Parker Campbell. Kaskinet runs it all the way back to the restraining line as we near five minutes left here in the period. Parker Campbell passed the ball one way. Keegan White went the other. And that'll be a shot clock violation. Here's Murphy. Ten in the shot clock as a trying to dig it out. Here is Ty Thompson. And unable to do so, so Borgatti will just stand over top and await the shot clock violation as then Thompson taken down. Excuse me, that's Dan Mickle, who had Josh Majeros over top. Four minutes and 20 seconds left in our first quarter as John St. John spins back out of the corner. All the way up top, a low shot coming here. This from Brett Clofer, and Demood will make the save, but the rebound unable to be picked up cleanly by Curtis Hall, and it will be by Feegan. But Feegan, looking for Clofer, throws it over his head, and it goes for the over and back. Quick restart is... Mike Byrne. Send it off the goaltender. Kyle Dawson. Outside. Chopped there on Keegan White, who had himself a night about 24 hours ago. Pretty sure it was a hat trick in the first half for Keegan White. As a whistle here. Not sure of the signal, but are sure that the ball is going back the other way in the stick of Adam Peroni. 3-10 to go here in the first. As off the bench, Ty Thompson to the outside. Thompson to the crease, the shot, and off the face mask of Hartley, who got up and was looking down floor, but nobody home. Robert Hudson again into attacking territory. Back up top for Kaskinet. He eats a big chop. And now we'll get rid of the ball as the double team arrives. Feegan. 
Into the corner for Klofer, a bouncer there. Saved by DeMood, and that'll reset the shot clock as Chris Wilman grabs the rebound. From out of the corner, Kaskinet. Pick from St. John. John St. John will get it back, wants the shot. Tries to take it into the feet there of DeMood, who makes the save. And sends up to Bo Columbus. Spinning and looking for a shot, not getting one is Colton Watkinson. Down floor and eventually stripped from some hard defense by Josh Majeros. And Borgatti taken down. We're gonna say too much from Watkinson as Kyle Dawson will put it up top for Clofer. Dawson again, spins away from check. Subak spying Dawson, Clofer. Hard shot rips and skips just past the goaltender and back out over center. They're gonna allow play to continue for Justin Robinson who shoots and scores and Brooklyn on the board with a minute 33 left in the period. Robinson followed that hard rebound all the way back and over center. And we'll get Brooklyn on the board, although now trailing 3-1. Garros controlling this faceoff. Couple whacks there on Mike Byrne, who was looking to get it over center. Now. Shot does come, and Hartley the save controls the rebound as well. And jogging it up floor is Hudson. The, Save there made by, excuse me, Demood. Jackson Subak, the bench telling him to shoot with 40 seconds left in the quarter. They want to go two for one. He wasn't really sure what to do with that ball. As now Willman will come back the other way. With Justin Robinson on Willman. Aaron pass out to the outside, Keegan White. Off the glass for St. John. John St. John, Colton Watkinson on him. Plays it back, a low shot, skips off the turf for Cascanet. And there's eight seconds left in the period. And Brooklyn, I thought, might have called timeout. That was the whole point of getting that early shot. As Tiernan sent it to the far side. And if that was on net, it probably would have beat the buzzer, but it wasn't, so we end the first 3-1. As you watch the MSL Classic here on the JVI Sports Network, I'm Matthew Carrick, and we'll be back to the Toronto Rock Athletic Center in just three minutes' time. Don't go far.
Teams switch sides here for the second period. As we've got Nick DeMood over in the net to our left and rather than Harley now on our right side. As look at the pass there, I believe it was a no look pass from Thompson. Who gets it back now and over to Kiernan. Only the one Kiernan Connor in the lineup tonight, so. It'll be last names from here on out. As Mike Feegan can't pick up. That pass right in front of the crease. He had Jackson Subak all over him. And it ends up rolling Aaron in the corner. Here's Ryan McSpadgett off the bench. A shot from Kyle Waters, who just added his name to the renunciation list. And I imagine we'll hear his name called probably pretty early on next week. Ty McLook in there scrumming for that loose ball. Gets it to Miller Rusbridge. Rusbridge with help coming off the bench. It's Kyle Dawson. And outside for St. John. John St. John taking a couple whacks here from Adam Peroni. St. John will now pass off, but under five in the shot clock as the shot comes from Clover and right off the bucket of John Wagner. Ball then went out of play, so off black they say, and it'll be orange ball. St. John around the corner. Off the end boards, Peroni giving chase. Adam Peroni up along with Bo Columbus, the shot, and full splits for Hartley. As this rebound gets close to the visitor's bench. Now Josh Majeros jogging up over center. Leaves for Mike Feegan and heads off for a change, circling the crease. Egan White had a bit of trouble with that as White now recovers down to the crease and holding his own, I was about to say, was Logan Swanson. But Keegan White's hot week continues as another goal makes it four, excuse me, four one here. And if you're looking for that Six Nations Coburg game, it's over on the other side. And on our other channel. And this should be the reminder to you to subscribe to both of them at all times so you won't miss a minute of our coverage from anything we do. Here's Clofer off the bench again. Closing in on 12 minutes left in the period as St. John lowers the shoulder, collides with the defender. That created room for the shot. And the rebound picked up by Keegan White. Another shot there saved by DeMood and sent up floor. Subak wasn't sure where it is. Three on one here for Brooklyn. Cross crease and Kiernan could get a stick on it. That was turning into a pretty play there on a three on one advantage for the visitors tonight. Dan Mickle to Kiernan. Could maybe make an argument for a moving screen there against Austin Murphy, but his shot results in a rebound and a fresh 30 seconds as it's played back up top for Mickle. Murphy works to the top of the fan. Where's that ball? As way up in the rafters, that actually hit the air conditioning unit. And went higher still after that. A fresh one, fresh ball in the stick of Biles, who now heads off the floor as the offense will take over. Working out of the corner, stepping into a shot, Parker Campbell. 
And the save made by DeMood, but St. John will get the rebound. Campbell again. Screen there from Dawson. Elects to pass over for Fegan. To Keenan White. And an interference call there as Cody Ward was slowed up. Number of goaltenders, I think. I think it's eight, six maybe. If I remember correctly for Brooklyn, there's no way it's eight. But it's a lot of them. So the backup tonight, Riley Hutchcraft. We've also seen Zach Higgins. Brett Dobson playing as well. Could only be four. but definitely the deepest of rosters of the five teams competing here in the MSL Classic for this Brooklyn Lacrosse Club. As the running shot there, save made by Hartley. It was Jeff Wittig coming off the bench. Rob Clofer now slams on the brakes. Part of the reason for that, of course, this is a very young and will be young team that's been assembled over the past couple years through the draft. And with a lot of the NLL and pro players not taking part, this might be what you get. If you're a fan of lacrosse in Whitby. Again, final game of the MSL Classic comes your way tomorrow night. It is Brooklyn and Oakville. Over on the main turf. It'll be on this main channel as well. And it starts at 8 p.m. If you're interested in being here, a 300-person capacity with tickets available first come, first served at MajorSeriesLacrosse.ca. And on behalf of JVI, we want to, again, thank Jamie Dawick, Nick Rose, and the staff here at the Toronto Rock Athletic Center for helping us out as well with JVI again. We're here for the Junior A Ontario Junior Lacrosse League, both tournament and some of the futures, some of the rising stars tournament here through MSL and some of the best internet we've ever had. So hats off to their IT department as well as we've got a lot of comments about the quality of the streams. And that's exactly why. Pick coming there from Rustbridge. As the shot came in, excuse me, it was Waters as Hartley made the save. Back the other way though, Tyler Halls. Will stay on the floor now, about to head off as set a screen for St. John. And as he leaves, St. John, collided by two defenders and then taken down into the crease. So a crease violation here sends the ball back the other way. Adam Peroni has Wittig off the bench. Murphy, Thompson across the restraining line. Halfway through the shot clock as Wittig gets it back, spins towards the crease and then touched it after landing on the red turf. So Russ Bridge giving it back to his offense. Keegan White, Parker Campbell from the outside. St. John into the feet there of DeMood after making the initial save and now having trouble with it. Logan Swanton rolls out of his stick and back to the goaltender as Subak picked up the ball. They called heads up at the last second as Ty Mikula came in for a huge collision there. Chris Wilman. And off the bench, Jordan Kaskinet. Bit of a weak shot in on Demood, who will get up and send it right to the front door 
And this results in a two on one. Hartley with the save. That came off the shot from Kyle Waters. And all the way down the floor. Where now Swanton will bring it back up. Jake Fox from the outside. Waters takes a bit off this shot. Make sure it's on target, but Hartley there to make the save. Although it is a fresh 30 seconds. Hartley not sure where it is as Mickel's shot. Spun the goaltender around. Off the bench is St. John. That pass too far in front, bounced off the corner. Couldn't corral it back. And now down floor for McSpadgen. And it's caught with the left glove of Hartley. Majeros over center. Close to six minutes left here in the second. Thanks, Marco. Five goaltenders for Brooklyn. I knew it was more than four, but then again, eight seemed way too much. And no, they're not all dressed, only two per game. And they've cycled them through all of their What's going to be, I believe, eight by the time all is said and done. Starting two, playing four, I believe, as Tiernan, oh, had a peek for the official. Which always tells you that the shooter thought he was close to the crease, but Kiernan is gonna cut this lead in half with 5.38 left to go in the second. Hall's winning another faceoff. Which when we called that junior league, it was his defense that we marveled at, but showing some faceoff chops here over the past couple nights. Here in the MSL Classic. This ball is gonna roll away from Clofer who Turned and fired blindly, trying to beat the shot clock. It was right in the mid section of Curtis Hall. And now Kiernan, the most recent goal scorer off the bench. To the left there for Waters, and a chop. Enon Waters was getting the initial call. And then Majeros went down after. Are we going to get off settings here? Goalies will get water with 447 left to play. I think it's just, no, Jake Fox is going off as well. As I watched it back, I thought maybe they were just calling the moving screen to stop the play, but Fox is in. And I believe it's Jake Kranz. Over in that left side penalty box. So how about some four on four, which Led to a lot of action in yesterday's game, the biggest run. That St. John and company were able to put together as this comes back for Borgatti. Getting the pass from John St. John and shot off of DeMood and out of place. So a fresh 30 seconds here coming for Chris Willman. Who now heads off, Vegan with it. Slowly walking near the restraining line. Down for Keegan White. White backing towards the fan. Will now stop up, tried to shoot through 
a pair of bodies and off the stick of Colton Watkinson. The other defender was Ty Thompson who headed down floor. Now off the bench calling for it the entire way was Waters who shoots and Hartley will make the save as Waters We'll give it to Murphy, directing traffic, telling Waters to stay wide. He does, passing for Thompson now. Murphy circled the crease, trying to shovel it through the five hole of Hartley, which was blocked by the stick. JP, I apologize, busy up here, man. YouTube chat is open if you're watching this game, wanna comment along or have any questions or on Twitter at JVI video. I personally am at lacrosse bosses. Look at this feed down from expansion who fires and finds the back of the net. And we got ourselves a one goal game now. Another face-off win for Tyler Halls, who jogs off with a bit of a hitch in the step, though. Hudson, the beneficiary of the face-off win. John St. John took a bit of a high stick, shrugs the helmet back down as we're back to five on five. This one from long range, right off the face mask of Demood, who's checking everything there. Gives a nod for the official. And John Wagner will start it back for Waters. Swim move for Thompson. Played back here for Mickle. And now Kiernan looking for Thompson. Oh boy, behind the cage and over the shoulder from Waters who was out of time and space. And that would have been pretty. But alas, over top of the crossbar. Willman on a bounce, back the other way for Keegan White. Out to the outside, under two to play here in the first half. Shot from White, handled easily by Demood. And down floor, McSpadgen has help coming off the bench and runs, tries to take the shot again, this time Going low into the pad of Hartley. Last time it was over the shoulder where he found Twine. Halls back off the bench. Looks to be much more comfortable on both feet this time. As now Clofer will turn the corner on Swanton. Now Watkinson into the final minute of the first half. Murphy back to the line for Kiernan. Crans on Kiernan and it's passed right into the stick of Robert Hudson and look at the wheels. Hudson blocks off, pardon me, Robinson and then ran out of space stepping in the crease. 41 seconds left in the quarter though. As Mickle has it. Bench wants a quick shot, but now they change their mind as we're under 30 to go. Both teams have both timeouts still left available. Whoever picks up this loose ball is probably gonna call one. And it will be Majeros, but it's a two on one as he's got Jake Kranz there as well. And Majeros, Josh Majeros, low shot past Demood, and it's 5-3 with 13.1 left to go here in our first half. This intermission break will be 10 minutes, so if you need a timeout or if you want to go check out the game on the other channel, again, Six Nations and Coburg battling over there, the final 
games of their MSL Classic. Daryl Smart with the call as a big hit. Off the face off, Chris Willman. The draw and the win there, and the conversation continues as Willman and Watkinson collided before that timeout was called. 7.6 left on the clock. That's the first one called by Jamie Dubrick. As there must be some words over there, I think. As the whistle blows, really short conversation for the defense. As Subak Peroni, Watkinson, Justin Robinson, and John Wagner come out as the five who will try and defend Fegan, St. John, Keegan White, Clofer, Dawson, and I believe Jordan Kaskinet. Hartley on the bench, trying to stretch the lead here late, and no time for the shot, as the play a little late developing, but 5-3. Here after our first half, you're watching the MSL Classic on the JVI Sports Network from the Toronto Rock Athletic Center. We'll be back in 10 minutes.
We're getting you set for the third quarter here. Five, three, your score is half an hour to play. With Willman back at the faceoff dot, along with Bo Columbus. And this time it is going to be won by Bo Columbus. Bo flip to Kyle Waters. And now in the corner for Murphy. Save made by Hartley. Here's Keenan after a brief trip down the floor to our right, off the crossbar, and that one goes up out of play. So a fresh 30 seconds here for Austin Murphy and the offense. Fox shooting through traffic, and the windmill stick saved there by Hartley. The ball never arrived, though. As in behind the play, Ty Thompson got tangled up with Clofer. Here's St. John. John St. John from the restraining line has room to shoot that one just high. Off the dasher, bounces all the way back up top and into the stick of Keegan White. White having trouble with it, now has to deal with Curtis Hall. All of this was under five in the shot clock and finally Subak will secure possession. As Waters. And Fox over to the far side. Waters too much on Jake Kranz. So possession turns back the other way now as Wellman finds Parker Campbell off the bench. And Kyle Dawson. Campbell. Couple whacks here from Wagner. As now St. John looking for a loose ball. St. John fell and Logan Swanton also went down. Just a possession call though. As here's Thompson, the hidden ball play with Kiernan. Murphy in front, sets the screen. Kiernan plays back for Fox who reaches up and nearly came down cleanly with that. Uh, but it's an open break for Halls who then touched his own rebound in the crease. Adam Peroni over center as Halls was giving chase. Here's Kiernan. Thompson off the bench. Out to the outside and officials' arms go up as that was quite obviously a high stick on Jeff Wittig, the bucket went flying. And already in the box, Miller Rusbridge. Just about three minutes gone here in our third quarter. And Austin Murphy's gonna lead this power play. Trying to get back within one. Murphy, Waters, working into the corner, no look now. They send it back for Fox, the cutter, as that shot goes through the crease and into the corner. Fox looking again to send it for Thompson. As that ball was partially intercepted and this could turn into a two on one, but turning and help off the bench. There to take down Andrew Borgatti. As Fox and Murphy. Hidden ball trick with Kiernan. Murphy has it though. Is that pass intended for Mickle. Went wide. Mickle in front of the crease though. Gets the rebound off the Fox shot. And indeed we do get a 5-4 score.
Eleven oh five to play. The power play marker there from Dan Mickle. Initial shot from Jake Fox, and Hartley couldn't hang on to the rebound. And yet again, a one-goal game. Wilman and Columbus. And it's going to be Wilman that pulls it out this time. Files. In on Demood, the nice rainbow pass over everybody into the stick of Peroni, who's all by himself. Now Waters back in the face-off circle, having all kinds of trouble with it, close to that over and back line. Waters, the shot here, and I think Hartley was guessing that was going to go to Kiernan. And had to cover up to keep that ball on the left pad. Parker Campbell. For Kaskinet, the pass intercepted by Wagner and then off a foot all the way down floor as Hartley tries to beat the shot clock almost himself. Plays up for Fegan with four on it. Fegan draws a triple team and goes down hard. As coming in with the hit was Justin Robinson. Fegan is back up, making his way off. As the ball works through Austin Murphy now. Fox setting the pick. Up top, well falling. Waters shoots off the glass. Under 10 to play in the third. As Hulls up the near side. He'll leave it for Dawson. Kyle Dawson being spied here by Bo Columbus. Dawson around the screen from St. John. Low shot, Dawson off the backboards. And now McSpadgen will give chase. Looking around to see who's with him, and the answer is no one. So he'll put the brakes on outside the restraining line and let the offense take over. Connor Kiernan. Outside Thompson. That shot off the end boards, it goes back over the center line and will be a change of possession. Jordan Kaskinet. Across the line, Clofer. Couple stutter steps for Clofer. Now we'll feed Fegan. Fegan shot off. That sounded like it hit a couple bodies before landing in the stick of Peroni, who takes it down floor. And the shot there, forcing Hartley into a save. Not a clean breakaway. But still, good opportunity there. Began's pass. Goes Aaron, so now Justin Robinson will bring it back across the timeline with Kyle Water. Eight minutes left in the third. Murphy off the bench. Playing it back to the boards. Fox is going to circle the crease here. Fox still with it. Now chopped away against the double team and three on the shot clock. And Borgatti will just await the siren. Borgatti, long bomb up for Robert Hudson. He does a high step at the line. Looking here for Majeros, who goes over the back of McSpadgen. And now Subak onto the loose ball. Two on one. Subak. Passes off on the crease, a couple shots there. A couple moves, rather, before the shot from Swanton. And now we'll go back the other way. Track meet starting to develop here in the third, much as it did last night. And they're going to call over and back against St. John. And who's going here? It's either St. John for not putting the ball down, or it's Justin Robinson for the slash. And I think they're going to get John St. John who doesn't like the call, shaking his head. As Nick DeMood and Ryland Hartley will come to the bench for a water break. 7.20 to go.
still see a two on the side of Six Nations. It was at one point 6-2 in favor of Coburg over on the blue turf on channel two. I'm Daryl Smart taking you through that action. If you want to check it out, it's also linked in the playlist here on the main channel. If that's the game you're looking for, or you can check it later as the ball movement there for the power play has tied things up with Jeff Wittig, the last to touch it. Five all here, 7.03 to go in the third. That power play took all of 17 seconds. On the delay of game call. Again, that John St. John disagreed with. Columbus and Halls to the young up and coming Drummond in many major series. Of course, some of the usual suspects, including Jake Withers comes to mind. Not playing as Peterborough decided not to enter a team. All games being played here in Oakville. Look at the move there to get free and capture that loose ball by Tyler Hall. As I said it last night, what an impressive month or so look out here as Halls and Mike Byrne swinging. And it's just gonna be Byrne. Jason Crosby disagrees, but. Burns swung the stick right back and it hit Halls right in the face mask. Looks to be okay as he stays on the bench. We are four on four and there's Hall's now going to the penalty box. A lot of confusion on that start as there were two penalties put on the board. So I guess they did get both sides for high sticking. Cody Ward, shot there. Hartley will dump it all the way down floor. Not sure if that was just intended to get it out of harm's way or if he was actually looking for Rob Clofer, who was hanging out at center, but Either way, it's a turnover. And Thompson crashing into the set. Now Mickle and Kiernan. Dan Mickle again, waters in on the crease and in the face of Hartley. Majeros helped him get there and then took exception. As everyone goes their separate ways, but this one starting to get a little spicy with five to play in the third quarter. And let me tell you, I'm here for it. St. John. Should probably rephrase, that's gonna be a crease violation. Here for tough, hard-nosed lacrosse. Not necessarily the foolishness that crosses the line. As Fox brings it ahead. Murphy. Couple big checks there. Kranz goes flying off the pick from Jeff Whitting. Surprised there was no call there as Fox can't pick up. If he did, it might have been over and back because we got a tie up on the crease. Back the other way, Austin Murphy and Chris Willman, I believe. What was that all about? The words continue between Murphy and Willman and a few others on the benches. Still 10 seconds remaining in the initial offsetting penalties. And we're gonna go three on three here for a little bit. 
St. John will direct traffic. He wants Feegan to go low. Now coming back high is Mike Feegan. St. John, the only other third there is Cascanet. St. John behind his back. Cascanet had gone towards the crease as St. John has it now. Hearing it from the opposing bench. Cascanet, no room to shoot. No room to run either as Cascanet will just dump it down into the corner as the shot clock was about to expire. Four on four now with a minute 25 left in the second set of offsetting minors as Kiernan brings it over the restraining line. 3.40 to go here in the third quarter. Echo working out of the corner. Excuse me, that was Thompson looking for the touch pass there on Kiernan who did get the touch. But Hartley did one better. Kyle Dawson, St. John will set the pick. Wagner gets help from Bo Columbus, but St. John's still able to get the ball as he's taken into the glass before the Feagan shot. That went wide anyways. Haroni now. Thompson. Last one on the change is Waters. Halfway through the shot clock for Fox. And now Mickle a hard shot. That does skim the arm of Hartley and look out. Tripping on the restraining line was Waters as it's back the other way. Mickle trying to go low to high but entered the cylinder and Robert Hudson passes, I was gonna say straight into the stick of Robinson, but didn't quite pick it up as cleanly as I thought and then lost the stick, but picked up by Byrne whose shot is handled by Hartley. Off the bench is Feagan. Feagan's gonna split the double team here but then collided with Subak as Klofer off the turf. Back for St. John, under two to play in the third. Ten left in the shot clock. And a holding penalty is going to come here to Justin Robinson. As spun down on his way to the crease was Jordan Kaskinet. And Brent Colomb has heard enough. As he's also going to tee up Robinson. So it'll be a four-minute power play here in a 5-5 tie with a minute 44 left in the third. So final game of the Classic for Six Nations and Coburg over on the other side as well as Jamie Dubrick and crew. Brooklyn will get final billing against Oakville tomorrow at 8 p.m. here on JVI. And again, MajorSeriesLacrosse.ca if you want to be in attendance. First 300. First come, first serve. And it looks like we're just going to leave the deuce on the board. It was four, however, to Robinson as... Power play sets up. St. John and Feagan high off the end boards. A bounce back to St. John with under 10 to go in the shot clock. Pick there from White. Played back near side and the shot from Cascanet. Into Demood. Two goaltenders when you look at them don't really I don't know, it's weird. We don't have the size numbers, but look to be smaller goaltenders, but definitely move well through the crease. Someone had commented that in the YouTube as well, and it's exactly right. Hartley and Nick DeMood. As Murphy will go behind his back. DeMood, the former St. Catharines Athletic, 
Rylan Hartley, former Orangeville Northman. And their most recent Junior A young goaltending superstar, Chris Ariglieri, just declaring for the draft. Here's St. John. Surprise, surprise, a good goaltender coming out of Orangeville. Here's Demood. 13 on the clock. And St. Catharines has produced some good ones as well. Demood, Eric Penny comes to mind, as does Cam McLeod. What a performance he put on. He'll get a look at Panthers camp as Hartley down here right at the end of the third. And what is a 5-5 tie as we head to the final 15. You're watching the MSL Classic here on the JVI Sports Network from the Toronto Rock Athletic Center in Oakville. So here we go then, the final quarter here on the red turf for the MSO Classic. Our final game here on JVI second, or excuse me, I believe we're on the first channel tonight. I've got to be honest, all the games are starting to be the same. I know we're playing MSL. It's about as far as I got. Main channel here, so we will have one more on this channel. Final game of the Classic on Channel 2, ongoing over on the other turf, I apologize. As Hudson to the far side. 18 months of no lacrosse, then we got all the lacrosse. And we're about a weekend away from sitting back in the same boat again. Look forward to the NLL draft next week as the shot there on the crease, Dawson. Rebound turned into a good opportunity for White. But Demood there to take that away. Brought up by Peroni. Kiernan now. Kiernan still with it. Double team spying. This is a penalty kill, though it's not on the clock as Mickle straight to the cage and Hartley the save. Vegan has St. John off the bench. Power play looking to get to work. Ten on the shot clock as Dawson gets it. St. John, low shot and the save made by Demood. Heads up here is a big collision between a pair of 11s. And Feegan got the better of that exchange as Murphy went down. Cole Watkinson's shot wide of the mark. Willman 
will regain possession. Robinson standing in the box, so we must be under 10 here. Again, not on the board here in-house as Fegan picks up with only five in the shot clock, though. Keegan White trying to let one go. Fegan over the shoulder. And wide to end the shot clock. And we do go back five on five as Cody Ward brings it over center. Now Thompson for Wittig. Defender Borgatti had lost the stick there, so I guess Thompson called on the interference as Mickluck came up limp and goes down. Ty Mickluck already with a big wrap over on the right side and just pulled up lame. Looked like grabbing the hamstring, and you can see the pain here. Initially thought the knees were wrapped, but they look more like just to cover up so you don't get the rug burn playing here on the turf. But Ty Mikla gets to the bench with the help of the trainer, throws the stick in disgust as you hope it's just something like cramp or, or uh, like Charlie horse pull, something like that. And uh, his reaction seems to know that he knows there's something serious. Shot there from Mickle, a nice save from Hartley. As now Halls back the other way. If there is a silver lining again, it's that Mickluck did go to the bench and not straight off. A Castanet shot will be saved by Demood. As one eye over there on the situation on the bench and one more on the floor as shot here from Wagner will end up in the corner where Waters runs into it. Thompson. Thompson one-on-one -on -one stops just before the crease. Still looking for an outlet, finds one in Kiernan. Over to the far side, Jake Fox. No one to pass to, so he'll take it straight through the middle himself. And then going airborne was Wittig. Ball was already headed up floor, though. Jake Kranz in transition. Can't get it through the stick of Robinson. And Kranz hard after the loose ball. But it'll be Brooklyn that recovers. Expansion. With four minutes gone here in the fourth. Fox again with a big fake before finding Murphy in the corner. Thompson, hard shot there. That caught a piece of Hartley before the rebound goes to the half boards where Jake Fox will get a fresh 30. Murphy for Waters, back for Austin Murphy. Onto the crease, oh! Jake Fox looked like he had Ryland Hartley at his mercy, but on his wrong side, couldn't find any part of what looked to be an open net. Look out here though, as nearly intercepted was Mike Byrne. And if he did, it was a clear path to the cage. But instead, it's a shot clock that is quickly running out for Jordan Caskinet as the shot comes from St. John and Demood, equal to that task. Curtis Hall has Murphy off the bench. Out to the half boards for Mikkel. Waters. Didn't get all the way to Waters off the glass. And another just nice little play there by Tyler Halls. Out of the play from his stomach to push forward. And it may turn into a scoring chance as Miller Rusbridge gets in tight to the mood. Yeah, 
Here's Justin Robinson. Partly was going down. The shot went there as well. So he'll come away with the save from Mijeros grabbing the rebound as Fegan over center. Peroni chasing Fegan to the outside for St. John. Under 10 to go in the shot clock yet again as Subak. Bit of a check there on St. John. Got him down to his knees, but no further as now Kyle Dawson has to deal with Cody Ward. And that's enough for the 30. Eight and a half to go here in regulation. Watkinson down to the crease. Thompson chasing his winning. He got a fistful of glove from Hartley and then a few words after the fact. As Wilman brings it up the near side. Keegan White on the crease. No room to shoot. McSpadgen will bring it back the other way. McSpadgen out for Connor Kiernan. Who will spin back and now Borgatti takes him into the boards. Kiernan gets the help from a screen. But looking for Wittig. Ball went Aaron. Murphy has to shoot through a defender. It's Clover as that forced the shot wide and the shot clock will sound yet again. It's funny, we had a stretch of back-to-back -back goals. We had a stretch of good defensive stands. We had a stretch of transition play. And now we're in a stretch of shot clock violations. Here in the fourth, this game's seen a little bit of everything. As now White from outside. No shot clock violation this time as that one finds the glove of Demood. Picked up by Peroni. Subak joining transition as Hartley makes the save. Fox was tied up, so he couldn't get the rebound. And it will be played over center for Wilman. Trailing is Hudson. He has it now. It's Clofer off the bench for St. John. Prowling around the far side. Playing back for Fegan. Mike Fegan to the foot there of Hartley and a big hit sends Clofer down and he looks to be hurt as he gets up slowly. Yeah, favoring that right leg that's already got the brace on it and Clofer is crawling to the bench. Brett Clofer won't get there. was a collision between Watkinson and Clofer. And again, that right side is the one with the brace already. So we've seen Miklik go off in what looked to be pretty bad, and now Brett Clofer as well. With 6-11 to play in what's a tie score. 5-5, which is... I gotta be honest, pretty rare for these MSL Classic games. Checking in on the other side, it looks like we've got 9-5. The Six Nations starting to get. Back into the game. Down 6-2 at one point. I guess that's still four. Math was never my strong suit, but for some reason, 9-5 just looks better than 6-2 does. Here it's five all in the final six of regulation. Wagner for Thompson. Up top for Murphy. Murphy will flip here for Mickel. Dan Mickle from the corner to Austin Murphy. On the run is Fox. And under five to go in the shot clock as Thompson goes down. It'll be played up and across center by Borgatti. Go, go, go. 
for Wilman and Borgatti. Keegan White off the bench. Another shot clock with 10 on it as White is outside the restraining line. Feegan takes it down deep. And now the shot does come from Kaskinet. On the mark for the reset, but not the rebound. Burn for Wittig. Under five to play now. For Kiernan to Waters. Here for Ty Thompson. Spins and fires, that's off the end boards. Handled, came straight back for Waters who got the shot away. And now here's Rob Clofer. Clofer will bounce it to the door. Where White will send it for St. John. Pick coming here from Dawson. St. John works around, it gets the shot, it's wide. And then McSpadgen sent flying. As this will be over and back against St. John. McSpadgen closing in on four left. If required, I believe it's a 10 minute sudden victory period, which we haven't seen yet in MSL Classic. So I'm not entirely sure. Austin Murphy from long range. Hartley got a piece of it, but it trickled the rest of the way. And breaking the deadlock. I believe the first lead of the game. 6-5 for Brooklyn as Austin Murphy shoots around a screen. Been quite some time since we've seen a goal by either side. As this should be good, Columbus and Halls again. And Bo Columbus just winning it clean. Back for Suba. And now Byrne. Mike Byrne double team closing in, so he got rid of it for Waters. Now Kiernan over the shoulder, no look, with his back to the net. Fegan in the corner. Still trying to think of what that would have been from Kiernan, but this shot skips off a body. He goes back towards center. Not quite far enough for White. As McSpadgen in there for the loose ball. As is Robinson. Robinson and McSpadgen now coming in to help out. Cody Ward. Tyler Biles is there. As is Fegan now digging for it. And Rob Clofer arrives on scene just as the shot clock expires. Robinson pinned against the glass, does get it free for Wagner. And that takes the game clock down to two and a half. Pair of timeouts in the bag for Jason Crosby and company. Jamie Dubrick has one left at his disposal. Here's Jeff Whitting. And again, Kiernan tries to go oh, over the shoulder. And then the between the legs attempt. As Robert Hudson basically takes him and the defender to the net as Peroni was all over Hudson. Nice pickup off the boards there. It bounces into the stick of Watkinson. And Murphy and Kranz get their sticks high. Shot from Murphy off the face mask. And we've got a judo match happening here as Murphy goes down at the hands of Miller Rusbridge. Murphy and Kranz were all over each other that entire set. And then Murphy gave up. And as he came over to collide with Rusbridge, 
There was a bear hug and then nice little hip toss. That will earn both parties two minutes. Sounds like we may have a comeback over behind us. Daryl Smart calling the other game over on channel two. As Jake Fox in the corner here on the red side. Fox has Willman all over him, gets the corner, takes the shot, and Hartley had to be strong again. As now Halls over center, turns and bounces it back to Willman. Willman all alone, had the side of the net, but it was just wide, and I think Demood might have got there in time anyways. Under a minute to go here in regulation. Bouncer from Keegan White. Hartley still in the net. This one's going to be over and back. Doesn't quite get far enough. And we'll see what Jason Crosby wants to do with 41.8 left. Not yet for the timeout as his club's got the one goal lead. Wittig. Now Mickle back for Jeff Wittig again. Four on four for another minute. That's assuming we play more than regulation. Shot clock down to 10 as Wittig circles the crease. Now five as Kiernan has it go off the end of his stick. 14.2 immediate timeout here for what is going to be a last shot play. Five on four to try and tie it up and force overtime. And indeed, the comeback is on over on the other side. Nine, eight, your score. And of course, I checked the score and forgot to check the time. I believe it was about eight minutes left. And Coburn has just pulled back out to a two goal lead. But why would you want to flip over now? 14.2 left here in regulation of a one goal game. St. John wants to get this play underway with Demood getting back in the cage. Again, only a five man set here with two players in the box and Hartley on the bench. It comes to Fegan looking to go cross crease. Off of body turning and firing down floor and wide of the net, but it will be a Brooklyn win. Oh, so close to challenging. I was about to say perfect record, but they did have that one loss earlier. And again, still not done in the MSL Classic. They'll be back tomorrow here on the main channel. We encourage you to switch to channel two, still ongoing. Again, a good matchup between Coburg and Six Nations. Daryl Smart will take you through that one, but for our producer and director here on the red side, and Gary Morrison, the rest of our JVI crew, and the MSL, I'm Matthew Carrick. Thanks for tuning in to the MSL Classic. We'll talk to you tomorrow, 8 p.m. on the main channel.